Here we're going to have a look at our stainless steel uh, limit switch box. You can see one here that was set up on the top of our <coughs> pneumatic actuator. Excuse me. Now this is also IEC EX EXD approved. Um, so it's a hazardous area rated limit switch box. Now usually this is just a, a sample one that we've run up on our standard aluminium actuator but usually if you look over to the side here especially if it's stainless steel it's for a corrosive environment or an underground mine or something like that where they would also run or we would also run a stainless steel actuator so you'd have a stainless steel valve a stainless steel actuator a this is actually a stainless steel uh, EXD the Moore solenoid valve and then we have the stainless steel EXD limit switch box which is what we've mounted up here at the moment so the first thing you notice out of the box when you get it is you've got a bracket on the bottom so this bracket bolts to the bottom of the limit switch box now this bracket if you notice is actually a dual size bracket so if you look up where this is mounted up here on top of the pneumatic actuator you see these four holes which is we've already mounted this one to this is called an Amur standard or an Amur interface it's just a standard of the spot sizes and spacing of these holes here so as you go through the larger actuators it will actually step up and you'll find that these these Namua holes will be further apart and this uh, raised female drive that connects to the spline on the pneumatic actuator is actually higher up so this bracket will these legs will come out and go down which makes it the space higher and the spacing of the Namua holes wider this is really handy because you don't have to guess the size of the bracket that you need it doesn't cover all of them but it covers the two main sizes so that's very handy now once you once when you go to mount it on the pneumatic actuator here you will take the visual indicator off the top of the drive on the pneumatic actuator we've taken this one off already you just do that by unscrewing this plug and sliding this off different brands will be slightly different on what they do here as you can see over here this is a, a raised indicator dome on this one it's actually a good one to see you can clearly see the Namua mountings on that one so that would come off and reveal very similar drive to under here and when I say very similar the one thing that's going to be the same is how it mates so you can see this drive here with two flats it's almost a stepped double D drive that will mount into this raised female drive on the top of your actuator here what that does is create a mechanical connection from the drive inside the limit switch box to the drive in the rack and pinion pneumatic actuator all the way down to the shaft that connects to the ball so whenever this turns the whole unit turns together as a mechanical linkage so whatever the actuator doing is doing the valve is doing and the limit switch box will be doing as well unless you have a breakage in your shaft in the ball valve or actuator or something like that which is very very rare it would take a lot of torque or some sort of major blockage to break that now if we look inside the limit switch box actually sorry if you look on the side here you'll see the cable entries so it's got two m20 cable entries on this one now the ip class on this is ip rating is 66 now it's only 66 if you use the proper rated cable gland you can't get an IP66 rating out of this if you don't use an IP66 cable gland. So I've loosened these screws off and we'll take a look and have a look what's underneath the bonnet here. So I'll put that top down here. Now you can see the drive that runs through that mates to the pneumatic drive and the pneumatic actuator and there's two cams on here. Now these cams rotate and trigger these switches. So this will give you standardly will give you end of position so open or close feedback and you can move the cams so they'd give you a feedback in another position that's usually open or closed what we would call end of stroke so it's not going to give you uh, like a modulating output like a 4 to 20 milliamp or, or another stand like this it's really only going to make or break now these are two single pole double throw switches so you can wire them normally open and normally close what I'll just do is go ahead and actuate this yeah that's a good point there's a wiring diagram on the underside of the lid a little bit hard to see through the camera but easy to follow when you're looking at it I'll go ahead and actuate this and you can see this drive move with the top off <coughs> so 
So I'm just going to press the manual override on this and little solenoid valve here. And if you have a look at the shaft, you'll see it move and the cams move with it. So you can see the top switch released and now the bottom is depressed. If I release that again, you can see it happen. Now these cams are adjustable. Just move them down to set them here. Usually you would do the final calibration upon commissioning. The electrician would do that uh, once everything's in line and working well. Now if I put the top back on, just line it up, put the spline on the top. Now you would do these back up once you've done all your electrical connection. We'll just leave that loose in the meantime. But if you have a look at this visual indicator, this is now going to work because it's mated with the drive. So the valve is open now, the valve's closed.